Okay, so as usual, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending upon your time zone. Neil Matthews from WPDude.com here. And today's session for the WP Owners Club members is all about troubleshooting your WordPress site. What to do if your site crashes, or if you get error messages, or if you have any issues where you don't know what the problem is, how do you troubleshoot it, how do you find what's causing your problem. So the agenda for today's session, we're going to look at why we need to troubleshoot WordPress. It's not perfect, it does have problems sometimes. Then I'm going to take you through my troubleshooting methodology. This is tried and tested on hundreds of WordPress installs. Uh, I'll take you through how to uh, diagnose and find the problems in your site. Well, then we'll look at troubleshooting plugins and themes, and then we'll look at troubleshooting the WordPress core files and a little bit of troubleshooting the database. The database is not usually a problem in a WordPress install, but I'll give you a couple of pointers there. And the last part of the troubleshooting will be some miscellaneous bits and pieces that I couldn't really uh, categorize under plugins, themes, or WordPress core. Then we're going to have a quick demo. I've got four sites that I've set up and we've got four different problems I'm going to take you through. Use my methodology and we'll, I'll show you how to fix them. Uh, as usual, we'll come back for a question and answer session at the end. So if there's anything I haven't covered, you can ask me there. It's quite a short session this one. Um, 30, 40 minutes tops. So what I'm going to teach won't take long to teach you, but it is uh, really, really useful stuff. And like I say, I use it virtually every time I touch a, a client site that they've had a crash problem. So, why do we need to troubleshoot? WordPress does go wrong. Um, it's a, a victim of its own success sometimes, WordPress. It's so popular and it's so widespread and there's so many people developing um, new code for it it does sometimes have problems. So think of it because it's open source and we've got all these themes and plugins and all these different hosting packages and the WordPress core itself. If you combine all of those together we do get lots of problems sometimes. We get things like uh, hosting isn't configured properly, we will get conflicts between plugins, conflicts between plugins and themes, conflicts between plugins and the core WordPress files. So bringing it all together, sometimes we do get issues. We get things like uh, white screen of death. You might have seen that before. When you make a change to your WordPress site and all you see is a white screen, nothing is displayed. We get header already sent error messages. We get memory errors. We can get corrupt files. Uh, we can get incompatibilities between our themes and our plugins. And of course, we can also get uh, malicious hacks and malware installed on our site. So all these things come combined together can cause your WordPress site to crash. So today what we're going to do is we're not going to look at particular issues, what we're going to do is look at a methodology that will teach you how to diagnose and find where the problem is in your site. So what is my methodology? <clears throat> Excuse me. Like I said, it's tried and tested in the field on hundreds of WordPress sites. This is what I do when I'm working on client sites. If I've got an issue where I don't know where the problem is, I'll step through this methodology and I'll pinpoint and diagnose where a problem is. What I'd like you to do is think of your WordPress site as an onion and it's got lots of layers in it, that onion. So what we need to do is remove layer by layer and try and pinpoint where our problem is. We remove a layer, test to see if our problem is gone. If it's not gone, we'll move down to another layer, remove that layer and so on and so on. The layers I'm talking about are things like at the top, plugins, moving down we've got the theme, then the WordPress core files, underneath that we've got a database, and lastly we've got the hosting package that it's sitting on. I put it in that order because nine times out of ten you'll probably find it's a plugin error. So always go plugin, themes, WordPress core, database, and then hosting last. So you step through those layers, removing them one at a time to see if your problem is solved. If you remove the layer, your problem is solved, then you've diagnosed where the problem's at. I'm going to step you through how to troubleshoot each of these layers one by one in the next few slides. But what I'll say before you start any troubleshooting or diagnosis, even if you've got a problem with your site already, do a backup. 
what we're going to do is we're going to remove layers, we're going to make changes, so it's always a good idea to have a backup before you start, even if your site's not working properly, have a backup that you can roll back to so you're not introducing more problems as you try to troubleshoot it. So step one, you've got an error, the first thing you should do is troubleshoot your plugins. Uh, the way I like to do that is to remove plugins entirely from the equation by disabling all the plugins. So you've got a problem, disable all the plugins, then do a test. Has that problem gone? If it has, that pinpoints the plugin layer as the problem. Then what I'd like to do is incrementally, I spelled that incorrectly there, sorry, incrementally reactivate plugins one at a time. After I've reactivated one, retest. So we've got none, no plugins are active. Re-add a plugin, test. Re-add a plugin, test. Eventually, you'll re-add the plugin that's causing your problem. And that pinpoints down to a particular plugin where your issue lies. I would also go to say once you've found the one that's causing your problems, deactivate it and reactivate the rest of your plugins and then test. Sometimes you could have multiple plugins causing your problems. So once you've diagnosed your plugin that's causing the problems, what do you do? A number of things you can do. You can apply an update if there's one available. You can check the plugin developer site to see if they've got any fixes or if it's a known issue. Uh, you could raise a call with the plugin developer, or bring it to their attention and hopefully they're going to then provide a fix to you. So if after you've disabled all your plugins you still have an issue, it's time to move down a layer. Remember what I said, think about it as layers. So you've removed the plugin layer, we've still got a problem, it's time to move down another layer and move into the theme. Just the last point there, sometimes you cannot disable plugins, sometimes the errors um, cause such a situation that you can't log into the back end of your WordPress site. Don't worry about that, when we get to the demonstration in a few minutes time I'll show you a technique where you can disable all of the plugins without having access to your back end. So that's saved me many many times, so there always is a way around that. So we've troubleshooted the plugins, we have then troubleshoot our theme. The way to troubleshoot your theme is to activate a default theme. What I like to use is one of the default themes that comes with your WordPress install. It'll be 2011 or 2010. They've been tested and they've been proved to work by the WordPress development team. So we know they're good and if we install and activate one of those themes, chances are it's going to work without any problems. So you activate a default theme and test again. Has your problem gone? If it has, then that is pointing at your theme layer as the problem. At the top of this slide I see it, leave your plugins disabled, so we're always keeping uh, the components out of the loop, so once you've activated a default theme, reactivate your plugins, always testing, always incrementally adding things back. You've got a default theme, you've got all your plugins activated, is the problem still gone? If it is, then we've definitely identified the theme as the problem. What can you do if you've identified the theme as a problem? We well, can then go into your theme and start pulling that apart and, and segmenting that. So things you can do there is um, you could take your sidebar widgets out. Perhaps there's something in there that's causing the problems. Again, take them out, test, re-add the, the widgets one at a time. It's all about taking little bits out and testing and adding them back in, always incrementally testing as you go. Once you've got to the root cause of your um, theme issue, what can you do? Again, you can perhaps apply an update if there's one available. You can check the developer site, see if they've got um, a forum and that might be a known issue, you could report to them or you could raise a call to them. If you've still got an issue, after you've troubleshooted your theme, we're going down another layer. We're going down to the WordPress core. As we work through these layers, just to point out again, the majority of the problems will be at plugins. You get fewer at uh, the theme layer, and again, fewer still at the WordPress core. 
the WebPrex core is more rigorously tested. There's a huge beta testing process, so you're less likely to have problems at the WordPress core. But I have seen issues here. So what to do? Download a copy of the latest clean version of WordPress from WordPress.org and then upload that overwriting your existing install. What this will do is it will fix any corrupted files, any corrupted WordPress core files. It will also fix any incomplete upgrades. So if you've run an upgrade and it's failed halfway through, perhaps some of the files are out of sync. So reinstalling WordPress will um, make sure that you've got the correct version installed and a clean version installed as well. So again, we've got uh, our plugins disabled, our theme disabled. We've reinstalled a clean version of WordPress. Is it back up and running? So it's always incrementally testing, moving down, down, down. So if we still got a problem after that, we're looking into things like problems with the database. It's very unlikely that you're going to have a database issue. Um, there's not much that can go wrong in the database other than it becoming corrupt and the only real solution there is to restore it from a backup but things that might happen or it might be permission issues on your user that connects to the database or you might see a database connection error this is not really a database problem it's more a hosting problem you'll see that database connection error if um, your back-end database server is down so what you probably want to do is speak to your hosting company if you see an issue like that Last but not least, we should troubleshoot our hosting. So we've got all the way through the above steps and the last thing to check is, is your hosting okay? If it was working previously, it probably is. So this is just the final step. Things you might want to check are, does your hosting meet the requirements? If you check wordpress.org, there's a hosting requirement document. I'll put that in the members area so you can find the link for that. Uh, some other issues I've seen, it might be that your hosting hasn't got enough memory so perhaps you've expanded your site you've added some new plugins perhaps you've just tipped it over that um, memory limit so that's something to be aware of um, sometimes uh, for example like the recent upgrade of WordPress the version that of PHP that's required changes so I've seen hosting issues where the correct version of PHP wasn't installed and last but not least, sometimes your hosting company doesn't give you the correct file permissions. All of the above, I would say contact your hosting technical support company for a resolution for those. Last couple of things I want to talk about before we go into the uh, demonstration, and that is a couple of miscellaneous techniques. The first one is the fact that you can enable debugging on WordPress. What that means is all the error messages, all the uh, system messages can be displayed on your screen. Um, if you get any issues that are, for example, if you're out of memory errors, um, they're not necessarily going to be shown to you. So if you enable debugging by adding this line here, define WP debug equals true in your WP hyphen config file, that will display a lot of debug information where you can help to diagnose your problem. I'll take you through setting up debug in the demonstration. Another good test is to try viewing your site in a number of different browsers. Sometimes you'll see issues in IE, for example, that you won't see in Firefox or Chrome or any of the other browsers. So if you are seeing issues, perhaps you want to try it in a number of different browsers. So that's enough of the theory. Let's go and do some demonstrations. I've got four problematic, not problematic installations. I've got four problematic installations that I've built. Um, and I'm going to take you through troubleshooting plugins, troubleshooting themes, and uh, I'm going to show you how to install debugging in the wp-config file and last but not least I'll also teach you some techniques to fix problems if you cannot access the dashboard. So without further ado let's go over to my browsers and we'll start fixing some sites using my techniques. So believe it or not it's <laughs> really very hard to introduce 
errors into a WordPress site when you when you when you're trying to give a demonstration errors. So what I've done is I've had to write a little plugin here. So what it does is it generates a fake error message. So what we're going to use is the plugin troubleshooting technique I talked about to uh, diagnose which particular plugin is causing this fake error message. So to do that, we log into our dashboard and go to the plugin section. So first things first, as I said, what we need to do is disable all of our plugins. So select everything. Let me just switch that off. <laughs> I've left the warnings active. I was just testing them before we started this section. So <laughs> we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let me just disable that first of all. As I always say every week, this is completely live, no safety nets, so <laughs> there will be issues. One moment please. Right, so just to step back where we were. So I've deactivated all of our plugins. Now what we need to do is check back to the front end of our site and see if our error message is gone. And as we can see, it has gone. So what that tells us, our problem was in the plugin layer. What we can do, we can re-enable them one at a time. checking each time to make sure that we haven't reintroduced the problem. When we do reintroduce the problem, that means we found where the problem is. So you can either do them one at a time or to save time you can perhaps enable 50% of them like this. Checking each one as it goes. So we haven't reintroduced the problem, so we know that those 50% weren't where the problem was. Um, let's activate Site Killer. Does that give us a clue? <laughs> no, we're not. We'll activate this PHP widget. And there we have it. There's our error message. Come back. So what we can say from that is the last one we activated, which was WP PHP widget is where our problem lies. Let's just double check that again, deactivate it, double check and our error message is gone. That was a bit of a, a fake error message. I couldn't find a problematic plugin to create a genuine error message on this type of problem. But you get the idea. We've diagnosed which plugin it is and we've isolated it, removed it from the uh, the mix. What I'll let it do is then reactivate all the others just to make sure that we haven't got any other actually I'll not do site because I know that's a problematic one as we can see let's just activate the ones I know work correctly I've introduced a number of plugins that were going to cause issues. So hello Dolly, I've changed the code and site killer as well. I know kills it. So these are the ones I was trying to add to create errors. So I'll not reactivate those. But get the idea. Find the one that's causing your problems. Reactivate the rest. Test again. Always making sure that you haven't introduced more issues. So that's great. We've been able to log into the back end of our site and deactivate plugins. But what happens, for example, as we have with this site here, where we cannot log into the back end? 
track login and it's still giving us an error message. So we don't have the facility to log into WordPress, we don't have the facility to deactivate plugins, what do we do? Well, the technique here is to attach to your site using FTP and rename the plugin directory. Let me show you how I would do that. Here's my FTP client. I'm all already connected to my hosting account. So if I browse to that particular site, which was site number two, and then I go down to wp-content, which is where our plugins are held. And then if I simply rename the plugins directory, perhaps plugins underscore temp, what this does is it fools WordPress into thinking there aren't any plugins installed. So if I go back to my install now and click on wp-admin, it lets me log in now. So if I log in and then go to my plugins, oops, that's my themes, my plugins rather, you can see there what's happened is it's realized that those two plugins that were previously active aren't available anymore and it's marked them as deactive or inactive. If I go back to my FTP and rename those again and come back to my sites and press F5 the plugins are available and I can start to then troubleshoot them in exactly the same way as I did with the previous install. And if I remember correctly, I did something to Hello Dolly. So if I activate that again, yeah, that's where my error is. And we've diagnosed the Hello Dolly plugin as the problem. Let's just enable Jetpack and Akismet. Yeah, so those other two worked fine. Hello Dolly is our problematic plugin. Obviously, I've created this problem. I've recorded Hello Dolly, but then you would go off to the plugin developer, search their site, perhaps apply a fix if there's an upgrade available, or submit um, a query to their um, help desk. So that's the plugin layer. We've removed those. So imagine we've still got a problem after we've fixed the plugins. We'll go down a layer to the theme. Here we go, we've got another problem. Uh, we've got another site, site number three. It's throwing up an error message. Whenever you're diagnosing it, I always recommend that you pay particular attention to the error messages. Immediately this is telling me that it's a problem in the themes. So it's WP content themes, very plain text where the problem is lying. It's even tell me which file to look at. Sometimes you don't get this level of um, error message. Sometimes you just, all you get is a white screen, so you need to start from the top and move down through the, uh, the various layers. But in this case, I would probably start by uh, troubleshooting directly at the theme layer. So if we log in, So as I said, the first thing to do is to activate a default theme. So if we've got appearance themes, we'll activate 2011, which is a default theme that comes with WordPress. And if we test it, we can see that the problem's gone. The problem lies with our previously activated theme. So let's just activate that again. Press refresh and the problem comes back. So we've isolated the theme being a problem. Um, so what we could do then is we could either reinstall our theme, we could uh, report that to the theme developer, see if they've got any help, that kind of thing. Um, because I knew I created the issue. I can just go into the header, remove that little chunk of code, 
update the file. And refresh, and there we have our site back. But if you were to reinstall your blog, or uh, sorry, reinstall your theme, or to get a clean version of it, that's the same effect. So it's always concentrating on isolating and removing layers, and then focusing on that and repairing that little bit. That's the whole basis of the methodology. Last but not least, what happens if we've got a problem with our theme? and we cannot log in. So if you've got a problem with theme, what you've probably done is you've removed all your plugins, you still can't log in, now you go down this layer again and remove your theme file. So again, FTP, so we want to go to site number 4 this time. Go to wp-content, go to our themes directory. What we need to do is just quickly add a quick word of caution there. We don't rename, re rename our themes directory as we did with our plugins. What we need to do is rename the directory of individual themes. So this is the active one. Rename that to underscore temp. And again, what that does is it fools WordPress into thinking. Um, let me just highlight. It fools WordPress into thinking that the theme files aren't available. As you can see, we haven't got the error message anymore. Uh, WordPress doesn't know how to get its theme files, so what it's doing is it just returns a blank screen. But what it won't do is stop us logging in. We can now log in where we previously we couldn't. And if we go to appearance and then themes, we can activate a default theme. And our site is back online. And then you'd step through, you'd reinstall your existing theme and work through it like that. Okay, so that's taken us down through two layers. Uh, the third layer, if you remember, was to reinstall WordPress. I'm not going to take you through that, it's a bit long-winded, but essentially you'd go to WordPress.org, download a clean copy, and then using FTP from your local drive, you just upload it and overwrite your existing install. So that's taken us through all those layers, and we are able to troubleshoot and find where our problems are. The last thing I want to take you through in the demo is to show you how to enable debugging. We had a sneak peek of it earlier, so if we go to site number one, what you need to do is you need to add a command into your wp-config file. So what I've done is I've gone to the particular directory where it is, clicked on edit, and that will open it up in my local machine. And then we need to add this line here. Define WP debug is equal to true. What that's doing is it's telling WordPress that we want to see any error messages and warnings that are being generated. The point of that was it then starts to give us a bit more information. So for example, if we go to There you can see along the top, it's given us a notice. Notice are just uh, bits of information, not not uh, saying there's a particular issue, but it's just giving us a warning that there is something amiss. It's given us notice that there's a deprecated argument. But what you'll also see here is errors and warnings. They're much more interesting to us. Uh, have we got another one down here at the bottom? Yeah, that's just another notice. So it begins to spit out these uh, debug messages to us. So we're looking for things like error messages, warnings, um, that are telling us that there's problems with plugins or themes again. 
it just opens up WordPress a little bit more and just gives us more visibility in what's going on in the back end. For example, I was working on a client site a couple of weeks ago and they were getting out of error messages, but they weren't being displayed to the front end. We opened up and switched the debug mode on and immediately it told me that's where the problem was. It just went off and increased the memory available to the site and the problem was solved. So that's my methodology in a nutshell. Let's go back to the presentation. So quick recap, my methodology is to think of WordPress in layers and to remove individual layers one at a time, testing as we go. So remove plugins, re-enable plugins, incrementally testing them as we go. If we don't have a problem, we move down. If we haven't solved the problem, move down a layer to the theme, down to the core, down to the hosting. So it's sometimes a slow but and painful process, especially if you've got lots and lots of plugins on your site, trying to reactivate them one at a time. Uh, but you'll find if you're methodical and go through it uh, in a structured manner, you usually very easily find and identify which plugin or which part of the theme is causing your problems. So as I said, pretty short session today, so 31 minutes so far, just as I said it was going to be about half an hour. Um, I'll open the floor to any questions you have about troubleshooting your WordPress sites.